Coach, um, uh, you know, with Kyle and uh, Taekwon going on uh, IR, uh, who will have to step up in their respective spots for you all? Yeah, so obviously both those guys, kind of what I said on Monday, I don't expect them back, back in the short term. There's still some things that we got to figure out. But that's the new IR rules. I'm assuming everybody's read up on those. You know, it's different than IR used to be, right? Where, uh, you know, for example, in 07, when we had Randy Thomas pull his tricep, we carried him, basically carried 52 all year. But as you put him on IR, as you remember, D led. Yeah, all year. So the new rules, I think, certainly help. Uh, there's just still some unknown, right? Uh, as they continue to get medical advice, and, you know, both those guys will have. Procedures, and you really won't know until after those procedures what the uh, timeline truly is. So, you know that is, they won't be out there for the next four games. That's what that what that does right now when you put people on IR. Uh, you know, we've got five spots left to return. See how the season plays out. As as for your, you know, your original question, and again, what I talked about on Monday. I mean, it's it's our job as coaches to adapt and evolve. Every team's dealing with something. And, uh, you know, we got the right guys out there and guys that can play multiple roles for us that have done it, you know, with Pruitt, Hesse, Burke, Felipe. We can also morph and Keith Smith. I mean, we are, there's a lot of things we can do to manufacture things in different personnel groups and obviously all our wideouts and CP and Avery. So we got a lot of options. Uh, obviously, you'll never go one for one with a player, but there's try to find different solutions. The fact that they're both younger players and both seem to have potentially big roles for this franchise for a while. Does that play into it too in terms of usage versus not when it terms of maybe bringing them back and maybe where you guys stand at that point in the year? Only time, no. Like, I think the only thing, you, if you go with this, this is your compass. You do what's in the best interest of the player's health, first and foremost, regardless of what year you're in the league. And the only thing I think that would come into play if you got a guy that's in the last year of his career, Maybe he decides, hey, I'll hold something off. I, I would never, if a guy's in his seventh year or second year, I would never advocate somebody doing something that wasn't in the best interest of their health. So that's the best way I can answer that. I understand what you're, the angle you're going at, but that, that's not, uh, you know, those are hypotheticals and right. great, great, uh, you know, social media debates. That's not. If you go by the compass, we'll always do what's in the best interest of the player's health first. That's where we'll go. Well, I guess I was meaning more not necessarily pushing them back to the field, but the opposite direction of, you know, four weeks from now, depending where you guys are, if it's like, hey, you know what, maybe don't – where you hold and say, listen, you have a long career ahead of you type thing. I was looking at more in the opposite direction. So you're talking uh, about conceding things? No, not conceding things, just like how that plays into it, maybe where you guys are at that I point. mean, I know what you're trying to ask. Look, go back to this. We're always doing what's in the best interest of the player's health first. It's pretty simple. Okay. Thank you. We'll follow up on the options you discussed at tight end. I believe um, Parker is actually uh, second in snaps and routes run, but Michael Pruitt was, was your, your, your right. next guy up on, on Sunday. Is he, what has he done that, uh, that, that puts him in that spot? A lot of different things, and it's not one for one. I mean, again, we can go out there and play 10 personnel, we can go all one, we can use CP wherever we want to, you can use Avery. Like, there's different ways to manufacture things, so it's never one for one. But you know, certain things, uh, they all have unique skill sets. You know, Michael is a very good uh, blocker at the point of attack in multiple schemes, he's got a good feel in space, he's a smart football player, multi sport guy, uh, played in a lot of big games. You know, the one thing about him and Ferk, he played in. Uh, you know, AFC Championship games, they played in playoff games, uh, and they got some good experience. And we'll just see how it plays out as we continue to put the game plan in the rest of the week. You mentioned uh, a couple days ago your appreciation for interior linemen. I think this mm -hmm. game will feature with Grady, Allen, and Deron Payne, the three defensive tackles who've played the most snaps in the league so far. What does it say about guys play a lot of snaps, have that endurance in there? It says a lot about them. Gosh, um, you know, you're talking about three of the better interior players in this league and with different skill sets, but both of them are presented. And obviously Grady, who um, we have a, obviously the utmost respect for and has become the, the leader of this team. But when you're talking about Payne and Allen, um, I mean, they're, they're hard to block. They play the run really well. Uh, they're powerful. They got good counter moves as they, they assault the pocket. Uh, different different ways they rush. Um, 
see why both those guys were, were first round, you know, he heavy investments for Washington. And you got Sweat playing out there, and they, they got a lot of bodies they throw at you, guys that are playing well. See what it looks like if Young comes back out there. So it's a good front. Specifically with the legs of Brady, what allows him to have that sort of endurance and stamina that he has? Well, probably the way he trains. You know, it's unique. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit of luck, you know, things that you can't help that happen in there, like what happened to TQ. Uh, so it's luck, but to really at the end of the day, it's it's the way he goes about his business day after day, the way he prepares and trains. In terms of, I know I feel like a weekly question: guys that are on IR, any no one will be coming back today. Okay, that that hasn't practiced yet. And as far as the, your left guard situation, you've started four different guys there in the last four yeah, weeks. We is, had to, right? It, is Chuma still your guy there? Do you have, is Colby Chuma played well? So is, is that? Jay Possibly Jalen there. At See the how the rest, of, the rest of the week goes, but uh, I thought Jim would play pretty well. I know you don't like to share personal conversations with us that you have with players, but could you tell us how Kyle Pitts reacted to the news of his injury? I don't have any kind of dramatic story for you. Kyle, Kyle's, Kyle's a Kyle, – no, it's like the conversations we have with every player. They remain private. Um, all those guys, they put it on the line for us, whether you're Kyle Pitts, you know, or Jared Bernhardt, um, all of our players. You know, we, we try to do what's best for them, and I'll always keep our private conversations private. Coach, what are some of the challenges that the uh, commander's uh, offense uh, puts on your defense this week? Yeah, they got a big, uh, heavy offensive line as well. You know, they've been running the football pretty well lately this last stretch. They've kind of turned the corner. Uh, a lot of talented uh, wideouts. You know, the guys play multiple spots. That way they get the ball to, to Samuel. Obviously, Gibson, Robinson's been running the ball well for him. McLaurin's a terrific player. They added dot. I mean, they, they, it's a really good roster. And Heineke's doing a nice job uh, delivering the football, keeping plays alive. You can tell they got a lot of confidence in them. Uh, but it's a veteran offensive line. Played multiple guys at center, but they, they're heavy-handed. And we know it's going to be a challenge because they, they will get downhill on you. Those, both those backs will. And as you went back and looked at the Chicago game, uh, you offensively, defensively, and special teams, you played pretty well um, having all three phases. Um, I obviously would want that this week, but uh, how do you build upon that for this week? Yeah, every, every week, I mean, it's a new challenge. You know, uh, you know, you sometimes you'd hope you could build confidence, but the, the plan would be completely different. You know, we've got to defend something completely different than we did in Chicago. Uh, it's a different scheme and front that we'll be playing, uh, different special teams. Schemes uh, a little bit. So th that's always a challenge. That's the fun part about the NFL is, you know, obviously getting to under understand the opponent you're playing, understand the schemes, understand where they're probably going to try to attack you, understand that they're going to have something new and what they possibly they're going to adapt to something at some point as well, especially if something's working for you. So that's a challenge week in and week out. And um, it's just so different, you know, the way Washington's built. But they're playing really well. It's a big game for both teams, and we're excited to be a part of it. Zacchaeus and Bird have both been very mm -hmm. efficient. Is there a certain skill set in being a, a second or third guy in line and, and the way yeah, that you play when second. you don't get as many targets, you know, you, you have to approach things differently? Depends, depends what your offense is, what your game plan is, how the game's going. It could be bad weather Sunday. So whether our plan is to want to throw it 45, 50 times, if that was the plan, you may have to alter that because of the, the elements and the way the game's going. So I, I've never looked at it as RB1, R, you know, wide receiver one, tight T1, whatever the hell you know people use out there. We've got an offense and the 11 guys we got out there, regardless of personnel and scheme, we expect to produce. So if the ball comes their way, opportunities, obviously if we're running a lot, you're not going to get a lot of attempts. Um, and especially, you know, if you got a lead. And, but those guys do a terrific job, and they've stepped up in big ways all year. Uh, Bird's made some huge plays for us the last month or so, and OC has been solid since the day I got here. And so we're happy both those guys are on our team. Uh, Will Compton announced that he was going to sign with you guys, and then it doesn't yeah, seem like that. I mean, look, it, I'll talk about people that are officially on our roster. Okay. I'm sure Will and his uh, legion of fans will probably update. You get more from Will than you would from me. So, uh, I, again, if somebody's officially on the roster, I'll, I'll be happy to speak more about it.
Yeah, Coach, you you talked about the outside linebackers. Then uh, uh, Troy was mentioned too in his role. Uh, it, it just want to check in with you and see how he's coming. I just went over all their numbers. We got over 800 snaps out of those guys. Yeah. So, I mean, all those guys, I mean, they're all – they play different roles for us. They've all had an impact. Um, very pleased with all those guys. Again, they're different – depending on the week and the, the scheme, what's in the game plan, but all of them contributed not only and just on defense D-led, but they've made some big fourth down and special teams plays for us mm -hmm. in the coverage game. So um, we'll just see how the, what the plan is this week. And But all those guys, they, they continue to improve, and that's a good sign. How's uh, Troy doing instinctually? Because, you know, he's played so many different places. And I know the linebackers have an instinct. Pretty good. Here. Pretty good. You can see that obviously made some – Big time plays for us on Sunday, you know, uh, not defense, but in the return game, had a big block on CP's uh, record return. And he obviously had the pump block early this year in LA. He's got close a couple other times. He's, uh, he, he's had an impact in a lot of spots for us. Experts have predicted. How do you how do you feel about where you are at this point? Oh, I mean, we're in the mix. So obviously, you you want to be undefeated, right? That's the that's the objective. That's not the reality, but that's your charge. You win every week. Um, but when you get to this time of year, you get into the holiday season, you get into Thanksgiving, you're making a push in December. You want to be in games that matter. So this is a big one for us. Uh, however, we got here. Um, again, we'll see what it looks like at the end of the year, but. We're excited to be playing in a game that matters Sunday on the road against a good, good opponent. Really, really talented roster. Uh, see what the crowd looks like Sunday. Hopefully, it's it's a good environment. A fun game to be a part of. You, this might be a very minutiae. I always love when you phrase it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. Um, no, I mean, Washington Fields has always been known as kind of tricky, maybe. I mean, you, you coach there as well. Do you have to prep or talk to guys a little about it a little bit more because it, a lot of these guys now haven't necessarily played on their field? Well, I mean, it's every every week, Mike. It's a good question because you know you got to understand the environment you're going into. Um, you know, whether a team like Carolina changes to the from grass, you know, to the turf, um, weather's always a factor. You know, if you play in certain places like last year when we played up in Buffalo, obviously the weather. Was an issue, yeah. You try to educate about the environment you're going into. Um, you know, you can't simulate everything. We don't. We don't have a snow machine like when you're getting ready to play Buffalo. Um, like I said, I mean, we all know that the weather can change, but but if it's going to rain on top of that, yeah, certainly. They, you know, they put a new new surface in recently. Uh, you got to make sure you got the right gear, right cleats, right right equipment. Anything else? It. Come on, Josh. You got nothing. I got none. I mean, it's, it's a short week. We're compressed here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, it's all good. Thanks, good. Thanks. Thanks. All right.